Richard Hammond says that back in the 1980s, when he was a small boy, there were only two cars that caused him to run about his house in Birmingham, clutching feverishly at his as yet unformed tinkle. <laughs> You're swimming like an old woman. I don't like being in the bloody water! Fact! I'm not comfortable, I'm from Birmingham! We'll go and find one other person. There's Air Force cadets. There's a fat bloke from Birmingham over there. <laughs> Some of you have got... Luckily, the Vespa was undamaged, which meant I could catch the others and thank them for suggesting bikes in the first place. You short-ass little Birmingham faddy, stupid. I've never been abroad and I don't like it and I'm with my piano playing. Idiotic Come on, cheer up, we're nearly there! Voice control. So if I want to know how much petrol I've got left, I just go, what, what is it? Display... Display fuel. Display fuel. That's amazing. Display stores. Display stores. And there are my bombs. That's it. That's incredible. Oh, and can it understand people from Birmingham? Uh, you can, you can uh, speak to it in any language you like. Even Birmingham? Even Birmingham. Really? Target Foxtrot. It doesn't... It's not doing anything. That's because you haven't trained it in your Birmingham accent. Oh, I see, you have to teach it Birmingham. You load your voice into this aeroplane every time you fly. Really? So mm -hmm. a pilot pushes his cassette in, yep. and then it learns to speak Birmingham? Yep. yep. Oh! This is only the third time I've had skis on my feet. It's really hard. I know, OK, lots of people ski these days, but I grew up in Birmingham. BMW's the most spacious because it was made in Bavaria. That's, that's like saying, who's the tallest Top Gear presenter? It's Richard Hammond because he's from Birmingham. No, it's not. Who's the fastest driver of the three? It's James May because he's wearing his mum's curtains. No, it really, it really is the most spacious car. That's a fact, and that's the judge's decision. Live with it. Stop. Holy shit! What? I've just had a transgender operation. Ah! Oh! You all right, Hammond, in there? I'm not getting out. I'm from Birmingham. I'm not good with water. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> the current's really <laughs> strong. It's Guys, very I deep. I just felt the car move again in I the know. Car. Right. This is our boat. This is our boat. We've got the tools ready. Jump in, please. I can't just jump in. I'm from Birmingham. I don't really do boats. Easy. I'm not very good at them. But I'm not doing that. Just jump. No, I'll do something a bit more... <laughs> oh, right, I'm off. And I believe we've been joined here by some people from the Nissan Z Club, yes? Yes. Which is yours? A 280. And what in the name of all that's holy possessed you to buy that? <laughs> I bought it 15 years ago and it looked good then. It didn't look good, it's beige with red seats. <laughs> you from Birmingham? Yes, how did you guess? Oh, it explains it all. <laughs> and you've got one as well? I have so, yeah. And you've got a beard? And you're from the Z Club? Yes, indeed. And you've got a beer. There, that explains <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the Z car. Come on, James. You might have all the horsepower in the world, but what you are is in the way. Stay with that, Birmingham boy. Progress was good. That is, until we hit Birmingham. Miles and miles and miles of bollards. Uh, this looks like rather an attractive small town. I wouldn't mind stopping for something like a cappuccino. By mid-afternoon, there was still no sign of Yogi and Boo Boo, so I prepared myself for a third night in the open. And if you want to write to the BBC and say this is some rare type of tree, and has to be preserved, you can stick it up your ass. Sick of the sight of this place. I'm a television presenter from Birmingham, not bare <laughs> grills. But Mr. Woolman decided we should meet at this very spot with three boats, and that hasn't gone down very well with my colleagues. No. There we go. Because I hate... But I'm from Birmingham. I've explained this, which is as far as you can get from the sea in the UK. Full of canals. We don't do boots. People are from Birmingham are always saying, 
It's the Venice of the North. It's like Venetians always say, we live in the Birmingham of the South. It's Canals like are just for moving coal around. I don't want to do that either. I'm from Birmingham. I don't ski and I don't do boats. End up. I signed up for a car show. Yes. Not cookery, not restoring frescoes and not boats. I don't like boats. You can't trust a boat. That's exactly the you right word. You can't trust any vehicle that isn't necessarily where it was when you last parked it. Problem number one. They can sink. Cars can't do that. What well, are the viewers going to think? Make... What? Nobody what if you them? turned on Jamie Oliver and you thought, I love that cooking show. Oh, he's doing some watercolour painting. We did it in lorries. We've done it on motorbikes. Lorries are vehicles. Lorries. They go lorries. on the we road. On horses. We do things that oh, go on that the road. Went well. Anyway. No, that's a coach. A bus yeah. is a big smelly thing full of old ladies going to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> that's taking businessmen from Heathrow into London. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. Right. Yeah, the car. It's just a bit bland. Old Saabs used to be quirky with wraparound windscreens and big slabs of dash and all of that. But this, it's just, it's just a car. It's nothing. Got a clever engine, though. It's got a very clever engine. For instance, if you drive it through really heavily polluted cities, LA, Denver, places like Birmingham. that. Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham as well. <laughs> the stuff that comes... For instance, James here has a music degree. So, James, if you would please take it away. Sounding good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> OK, here we go. On tonight's Cut Price Top Gear, a small plastic car that's actually quite economical. We take a seasonal Yuletide trip to uh, Birmingham. Oh, and we do have a supercar, albeit a quite cheap one. At this point, to demonstrate that Hammond's car was too small, James and I bought him a present. Oh! Oh! Do you like it? No, because we yeah. like because it's it's really a, the Draylon. Yeah. Because we know you like Draylon because you're like from Birmingham. Yeah. And we know that you like the Peacock and Cheetah blend, which gives an African and yet Birmingham flavour. Yes. Yeah. In and I've put it in my car and we know it fits. We know it fits it's and a mine. It's gift from It the fits hearts. in both our cars. Does it? Yeah. Yes, it does. Does it really? Yes, it Precisely does. Precisely into your car. It fits. It's, it's snug. 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 Is it? But it's snug. Snug. Now, the audit office, which is essentially the government, has come up with all sorts of creative new ideas for reducing congestion. They're talking about lane switching. So, you know, this is like Birmingham, where in, during the morning you go one way on the road and in the yes, evening you can go yes. the other way. Um, car sharing, using the hard shoulder yeah. as another lane. Lorries not allowed in the middle lane. All this Yes, stuff. yes, yes, I've got a much better idea. Do you want to hear my idea? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I've just thought of is minimum speed limit on the motorway of 100 miles an hour. <laughs> no, I've got it. What? Minimum. Minimum speed Yes, and I know how this can be enforced. All cars from now on will be sold with, uh, made entirely of plastic explosive. So when you drive on the motorway, the satellite recognises you're on the motorway, arms the bomb. <laughs> Drop below 100, boom! To get to this new car, I had to go to Toyota City, which is a whole city owned by Toyota. Imagine Birmingham, but full of Toyotas. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I am officially Top Gear's map correspondent. It seems to have turned out every, every week. week. Every <laughs> week. I don't know how this happened. But every week I'm sent a map. This week's map is this one um, that somebody's decided to send us because they claim it's unterrible. Rubbish. 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 No, well, I could see, tear I've, it. I've seen that one coming, so I've given you... Uh, there, there you go. It's unterrible. Apparently, can't be done. You see... Look, you That's can't... true. It's a No, you can... Look, you can't... <laughs> It says no biting. Yeah, well, it's, it's aimed at bikers, so that's what they're... Yeah, I'm going to eat my man. They are waterproof as well, which I think is quite a good so idea. That's actually excellent on well, a bike, a waterproof map. That's exactly what you want. Precisely, because you've never tried to use a soggy one on a bike, I think that is actually quite a good idea. Another one in my car gets mangled. So. Yeah, no, it works What are you doing? You can see the... Yeah, you can burn the map. So you can't tear it, but you can burn it. That's my map! I, 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 wanted I wanted to keep that. God. I'm covered in molten plastic <laughs> and it's stuck to the soul of your... What am I going to do if I want to go in... That's Birmingham. It was. It's, oh, it's Birmingham's gone. You completely ruined it. Right. Here's what terrifies me. As it is here on that, let's be honest, bit of scaffolding. Yeah. Just the tiniest, you know... Like that's Birmingham, or that's John and Groats. Look, it's fine. It's held down with some old concrete blocks and some straps that you use to 
hold furniture down in a removal van. That's perfect. Now for the news. Uh, you might notice we've got some new furniture uh, and a new telly. <laughs> now, the problem is, you see, there was a fire at our storage depot. You might have seen it in the papers. Mm. And nearly all of our props got destroyed. Yeah, and the, uh, the police are saying, as you can see here, that it was arson. Yeah, but, I mean, who'd do that? It's not like we've ever upset anyone. I know. <laughs> Well, there was the vicar whose tree I rammed in the Toyota pickup truck. Yeah, and everyone in Wales, and everyone in Birmingham, and everyone in America. Yeah. And oh, oh. Well, <laughs> it's a bit. It's I use the word advice, it's a bit camp. It's, that is a it's special. Camp. It is. What's camp about it's all that? It's pleated and leathery and. Oh. It does I give good occasion, that. That is a special event. Does Liberace pop up out of the centre console and play the piano for you? <laughs> You see, the reason I'm not having a go at your interior is my Aston has been delivered with Birmingham spec. That's horrible. Oh, that's quite vivid, isn't it? I mean, I, I, worryingly for you, I quite, I quite like that. <laughs> anyway, um, you know those Citrus that have got a vibrating seat? And the idea is, is that if you kind of nod off and stray out of lane on the motorway, the seat base vibrates and wakes you up and, ooh, you, you go back in line. I was talking to a girl the other day who got one. And she said she'd gone all the way from London to Birmingham deliberately on the hard shoulder because it was so nice. Have you seen these manhole covers? No. They're fantastic. A boy from Birmingham and a man with no sense of direction in Japan won't win. The end. Uh, there we go. Well, wow. what? You don't know what that's. No, but there's a red dot. I think that must mean you are here. Look, the ice skating man with the picnic table. Yeah, but that's a man on skis playing a harp next to it, which probably doesn't mean trade sales. Chaps, you know how difficult it is to choose the right calendar. Because obviously you choose it now and you've got to live with it. It's, a, it's a big commitment. It's it is. Year. 12 months yeah. you have to live with it. So I'm a bit stumped on what I'm going to use next year because there's this one, OK? This is Her Majesty's Prisons <laughs> of England. Different picture, OK, every, uh, every month. But then I found this one. Birmingham's Outer Circle Municipal Bus Route. Oh, nice! But then I found, I think, the solution to my calendar problems. The unofficial... Oh, yes! Which is happening. Who did that? Look, it's, it's unofficial. awful! Unofficial. unofficial. Yeah, you can have it, James. You can have that. I've got loads. Well, well... Why are you drunk in all the pictures? <laughs> I don't know. I was, it looks like all the pictures were taken coming out of awards ceremonies, so yes, I probably was drunk. <laughs> Do you know what I really love about that calendar most of all? Because it's unofficial, you all go and buy one. He receives not one single penny. <laughs> well, no, well, no. <laughs> Thanks, thank you for publicising it. Yeah, That's no, really. really kind of just make sure they've all got it. There we go. We'd like to recommend this calendar. Everybody, go and buy it. <laughs> Get rid of the calendar. I hate it. No, Let's no, do the rest of the no, show like no. that. Does everything get broken in our Christmas thing? <laughs> We ploughed on, and soon we reached the beautiful city of Birmingham. There are more shopping trolleys in the canals here than there are in Venice. But this is right in the heart of car-building territory. I mean, if my grandfather was in the car-building business, everybody was. I think I'm right in saying the UK is the world's third biggest market. For yeah, we buy products. more BMs than anyone except for the Americans and the Germans. So it's not like we don't matter to them. No, and it isn't as though they don't know where Birmingham is. I mean, they just have to ask their dads. They found it. I mean, let's be honest, the NEC was built on waste ground created by the Luftwaffe. <laughs> Who were powered by BMW engines. Absolutely, the Yankees 88 it? had BMW yes. engines. This right, back to the main story. We've had a letter from a leading light in the Albanian Mafia asking us to find out which is best, a Rolls, a Merc or a Yugo, which, for complicated reasons, Jeremy is using as a Bentley. Yeah, and he would not stop moaning about it. Well, you wouldn't stop moaning about our interest in history. Yeah, um, good point there. Word to the wise, never go on a trip with two old men who keep getting all teary-eyed about the Cold War. <laughs> yeah, never go on a trip anywhere with someone who believes the whole world should be like Birmingham. <laughs> But then I was told to report to the driver's briefing, where I was in for a surprise. This is from the United States Air Force, four-star general, General Mark A. Welsh III and his wife, Betty Welsh.
from Top Gear UK, today's honorary pace car driver from Birmingham, England, Richard Hammond. Do you know, I used to love Rallycross. Yeah. On Grandstand, a world of sport, you had Dickie Davis and you go, right, this afternoon we've got fly fishing and athletics and golf, and you go, oh no, and then, and Rallycross. Yeah. yeah. And you had those tiny little televisions, didn't you, with the little black no. and white screen you were watching no. it on. You might have done in Birmingham. Okay, take your mind off it, take your mind off it. Um, this, ah! The water behind this dam can supply Birmingham with 79 million gallons a day. Who gives a f right now? It's all right, we're good. I can't think of anyone I've ever met who thinks, yes, my life would be complete if I could buy an 11-year-old sports car that's made in China and then nailed together by a bunch of blokes in Birmingham. <laughs> forgetting is that is the great affection that is felt all over the world for the traditional British sports car. <laughs> <laughs> I actually say it's made of such pure wax from such a pure tree in Birmingham or Brussels, Bur Brazil, um, it's edible. Only the Americans would invent a car polish that you can eat. Uh, oh. Taste of car polish. Unfortunately, not all children in Britain were as fortunate as James and me. Because some of them were born in Birmingham. And you couldn't really have a Ford here because this was the home of British Leyland. I grew up here on this street, and I remember the day my dad came home with our new car. I prayed it would be a Cortina, literally prayed, but it wasn't. What it was, was a shoulder-sagging bag of disappointment called the Austin Allegro Estate. It doesn't even have four doors. What was my father thinking? Why did he do that to us? I fell to my childish knees, threw my head back, and I howled at the sky. Birds across Birmingham took off. Deer in Stratford-upon-Avon looked up. Such was my horror. This was the summit. This was it. This is the best that we, the Hammonds, could do. We lived in suburbia. People drive past all the time. They see your car. They judge you if you have a wishing well or a gate. We had this on our drive where people could see it. Because my dad had the GXL, he got the brake servo and the alternator as standard. I'm sorry to keep banging on about this GXL thing, but my mate Lonnie, his dad only had an XL, so he was scum. I walked home from school. That wasn't because I wanted the exercise. That's because I would rather walk or hop or crawl 30 miles than be seen getting into that. It's cars like this. It's secrets, dark secrets like this, lurking in people's past that creates serial killers and psychopaths. It's a bloody miracle I'm not one. It's not being short that makes me an angry man or being born in Birmingham. It's this, it's you. I could have been great. I could have had dignity, social standing. I could have mattered, but you came into my life. Unfortunately for the man from Birmingham, it was. Are you ready? No, I'm not! Look at how to work it! Well, you've got those two throttles, there's forwards and backwards, there's twin screw, you've got flaps, that's for trimming it out. As you go up, the nose of the boat will want to rise. You put the flaps down and it brings the nose down, gets you on the plane. I'm not on a plane. Why have I got flaps? They are on planes. Well, here we are in Birmingham, and I must say it's very nice of Bosch to advertise the programme like that. As far as the car's concerned, however, I've nothing to report. It's fine. Mmm, the M6. All solid. If I were in a Mercedes, I'd be... Come on, come on, everybody, get out of the way. But in the Jag, I'm relaxed. So 
they have an accident in roadworks and they're not even doing any roadworks. And ordinarily that would annoy me, but I'm not bothered. Eventually I broke free from the obstacle course that is Birmingham and found the supercharged Jag has lost none of its superchargedness. We're back in Birmingham. Jeremy was here earlier having a hoedown with the crossfire in Star City. But there's so much more to the place than that. For years it's been the butt of everyone's inner city architecture jokes. Even Telly Savalis couldn't make it sound good. Riding the express elevator to the top of one of the city's highest buildings, this is the view that nearly took my breath away. But now... Blimey, look at the place. Overnight, it's become the Barcelona of the black country. They see you cheering, Birmingham. Here we go. This will wade up to 36 inches, this car. That's more than a Land Rover Defender, more than the old car would. The air intakes have been moved up to the top of the bonnet so the water doesn't go in the engine. There's no holes in the river. I'm across. Yes! Interesting, you know, my dad, he's long retired now, but he used to run an aluminium die casting foundry. Uh, just north of Birmingham, and he had quite a lot of Indians in his workforce, as you'd expect for him. But, mm -hmm. And they used to bring chapati mixture into work in, in this form, in the dough form, because the top of the die casting machines were at exactly the right temperature to cook it. And all they did at lunchtime, having done about, I had one of them once, they made one for me. They just did this, rolled it out, went donk on the machine. By the time they'd got the next components out, which was something like a cylinder head, perfect chapati for that's the top brilliant. of the machine. And that's energy saving of course because they didn't consume any extra energy cooking those they just used heat that was already there like people used to cook things in the uh, in the cabs of steam locomotives and indeed in furnaces you could make a bacon sandwich on a shovel i've done that it's fantastic it has a type of flavor that you simply don't get from doing it in a pan right can i roll these out yes a bit of flour i'm talking rubbish aren't i but you can just nod appreciatively and i'll I be am. happy how much did you pay for this six thousand seven hundred yours Six nine nine five. Less. How old is it? Uh, Ninety four. It's seventeen years old. <clears throat> Nine. Really? Nine years old. How yeah. many miles has it done? One hundred and twenty-seven. Uh, Fifty-four thousand. Rubbish. Why does it have casters from a sofa instead of wheels? Okay, it's 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 period. They were that size in those days. What are they? Seventeen. 16? Sixteen. Sixteen inch. That's what Sixteen they were. inch wheels. And you know full well. That, that means fatter tyres and that means a better ride. Fact. It's got Smarties for wheels. And is that ruched leather? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Why do people from Birmingham like a ruched? <laughs> so now, Mazda. Over the years, they built up a fearsome reputation for making very sensible small cars and the worst television commercials in all of human history. This, however, is their latest creation. Plainly, they wanted to give it a name which conjured up an image of, of, uh, of aggression and anger, but unfortunately the job of naming it was given to someone from Birmingham, so it's ended up being called the Fudoy. Uh, the chassis is from an American Le Mans racer, which is the same as a European Le Mans racer, only fatter. <laughs> Body, that was clearly designed by someone with a Batman fixation. Uh, I think it looks absolutely brilliant, actually, although if you take it to a film premiere, it'll probably take a swing at its sister. <laughs> Allegedly, that is, of course. Um, well, news from my hometown, Doncaster. OK? Anyone from Doncaster? Yeah. You're actually from Doncaster? Yeah. You'll like this. It's actually news from Doncaster, OK? <laughs> the council has decided to risk it, OK? And they asked the people of Doncaster to vote on a, a name for it. They're two new sort of snowplow road gritter things, oh, yes? yes? OK? Would you like to hear some of the uh, suggestions people have come up with? Yes, please, Jeremy, we would. Here we go. Uh, Grit Van Dyke. <laughs> True Grit, Rule Britannia. I like that. Salt Disney. Oh, that's what they've done. These are the names they've chosen, OK? One of them is going to be called Gritsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Anti Slip Machine. <laughs> the other one, though, is going to be called David Ploey. 
That doesn't work. Well, I think they were hoping we'd think it was David Plowey, but it isn't. It's David Plowey. It doesn't work. Oh, yeah, as in snow plow. No. Well, that would work in Birmingham, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't it? I'll get the snow plow out. Snow plow out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll call this David Plowey, then. <laughs> I tell you, the marvellous thing is the council, OK, they said, this vote cheered the whole of Britain up. Well, it hasn't cheered me up. No, it hasn't. And the member of the council said it's got people interested in gritting. Well, it just yeah, hasn't. No, it hasn't. We would be interested in gritting, though, if we'd thought of a name. Yeah, well, we'd just call it Gary Gritter, wouldn't we? Let's be honest. <laughs> Or maybe Isish. That could work. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Gritter or Isish. Do we think those are better names? Oh, hang on. Adolf Gritler. Perfect. <laughs> That's a good one. We like that. Good news! No, actually, it's not good news, it's just some news, OK? MG is back. This yeah. is the new car. Here it is. It's called the MG6. You can have it as a saloon or as a hatchback. Um, it's supposed to be very modern in every way, but I don't think the factory where it's being made in Longbridge is modern at all because I've got the press release they sent out here and it says the first car was driven off the line by the only woman who works there. It's not very modern, is it? No. Did they go on to say, and best of all, she has a smashing pair of knockers? <laughs> <laughs> very modern. No, 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 don't tell me it says next, don't worry, chaps, we'll let her drive it off, but we won't let her park oh, it. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 1950! <laughs> it is. The car's gone away for trouble. That's not a joke. <laughs> now, the thing about this is, OK, we know that this is made in China by the Ling King, Wang King, Dong King, Dong King. <laughs> them, yeah, them. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Yeah, see, that's all I've heard. <clears throat> Corp heavy corporation industry, right, OK? And then it ships over to Birmingham, where they fix an MG badge on it, OK, and then sell it. But they say in the actual brochure, which I've got here, it talks about Le Mans and breaking land speed records, right, and says the MG embodies British sporting style. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I think the only British sportiness in that is the glue they use to fix on the badge is made from a dead British racehorse. <laughs> that is the only sporty thing in that car, I reckon. Um, oh, well, now, wait a minute, it should have the press release, OK? They sent us, has got a typo on it. Here it is, look. What? Ear. Stop. Look, yeah, ear. Ear. Oh, ear. I think this indicates the car will be a bit hit. <laughs> um, <laughs> might be complete rap. <laughs> Absolute ollocks. 